Hey, it's Chris here from Boro Trout Fitters, and today I want to tie for you my all-time favorite stonefly pattern. This is kind of a mixture between a girdle bug with the chenille, but also a classic stonefly pattern. I love it. It works great for me. It's got a lot of weight to get your whole rig down fast, and I like to use it as a point fly. Now, I like this in sizes six, sometimes four, depending on what I'm fishing. Today, we're going to tie size six, and you can go with something like the Daiichi 1730 series of hook, the Tiemco 2320 hook also works very well. I like that curve profile. So we've already got our hook on the vise. Let's get tying. Okay, so we've got our bead on the hook already. I really like MFC's Lucent beads. They're tungsten. They've got a nice antique color. I like them in a coffee or dark olive, around 530 seconds of an inch. But you can use copper, you know, brass, whatever kind of look that you want. And one thing, when you are choosing a hook, make sure it's got a fairly wide hook gape. That way you can actually get that bead around the bend of the hook easily. All right, so it's time for our goose bites. Now, because I'm doing a golden stone pattern right now, I'm going to tie on sort of this brown color. And the key thing when you put these goose bites on is go a little bit further back from the eye of the hook. Uh, if you tie too close to the eye of the hook, you're going to cover it up. You're not going to be able to actually tie this fly on. So we're just doing a nice splayed out pattern. I've now pushed the bead over the goose bites. I've done a wrap underneath. I'm just locking it up right behind that bead. All right, so next step that we're going to do is our lead wrap. Now. I like to use about a 0.025 kind of thickness. Around there's good. I just tie it on a little bit gently, and then we're going to wrap it up to the bead a couple turns, and then I'm going to fold it under, and then I'm going to finish it off with a nice body. Now, the lead's going to create a lot of the taper of this body, so I don't need it to go all the way to the end of the hook. You can see here about two thirds in. Now, after I've got the lead wrapped, I'm going to secure it with thread wraps, but I don't like to cover the whole thing. I mean, honestly, a few quick turns at the front, some loose wraps, and then some quick turns at the back to lock it in place is all that's really required. Now, I'm going to tie the thread down to the apex of the curve, and I don't want to go too far. I'd say about where the barb on the hook ends. This is where I'm going to then create a little ball to splay out those biots, and I'm going to tie the two biots on now at the end of the fly. Don't be afraid to extend the length of those biots. We're going to tie the bodies down, and now we're going to go to variegated chenille. I love this stuff. It's affordable, and when it gets wet, it looks really buggy. For the golden stone, I'm going with a brown black, but often I like to use a gray black. Now, I'm going to tie the thread up to where I want to start the thorax, and then I'm just going to wrap this variegated chenille around. It's going to create a taper, but don't be afraid to go a little bit thicker as you get to the body to really give it that chunky kind of shape. All right, so now it's time for thin skin. I love this material, and this is going to build our shell back. You'll see it's got a natural curve, and I want that curve to go along the hook. I'm going to tie it in there with a couple wraps to secure it in place. Make sure it's right on top and very even. Now, it's important that that curve goes along the hook so that it splays out the right way when we finish this fly. Rubber legs next. You can use whatever you like. Silly legs, sexy legs. I've just got a basic brown rubber leg here, and we're going to tie those in on both sides of the fly. I do like to go a couple wraps up from where I tied in the shell back thin skin. That way, it's not going to interfere with the legs and push them too far forward or backwards. So we're going to get those two tied in, and then we'll go on to our next material. Now time for dubbing. I'm just going to hand dub it right onto the thread itself. I like a UV ice dub because it's got a bit of flash, but you know, a rabbit hair dubbing with a lot of guard hairs making that chunky body works really well. And we're just going to wrap this over the shell back in between the rubber legs. And this is a good opportunity to use that dubbing to separate the legs and get them positioned exactly where you want them. We're going to work that up, build a pretty chunky thorax pretty much right up to the bead head itself. Okay, so a little bit more dubbing just to finish that up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fold that thin skin over, creating a shell back, and lock it down with a couple of wraps. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to fold it back over itself again, and then we're going to lock that down nice and tight. This is why it's important to get the curve going along the hook. So when we fold it back over, it goes in a nice gentle curve downwards with the hook as opposed to kicking up off the fly too much. So we're going to lock that down. Then I'm going to put a tiny bit of dubbing again on the thread, and I'm just going to wrap this over that shell back just to give the fly a nice clean collar. And that'll pretty much finish it up. So a little bit of a collar there. Now what we're going to do is pull out the whip finisher, and we're going to lock this fly off, and this will basically be done. We're almost there. 
All right, last thing I do is finish up the head and then I'm gonna cut a deep V into the thin skin to create these two wings. And I wanna be able to see the shell casing underneath. You know, stone flies, their life cycle, they're in the river for multiple years in some cases. So even if it's not stone fly prime time, the fish are still gonna have access to this food source. It's a great fly, I love fishing it and it always does well for me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Check out a lot of our other videos on bowrivertroutfitters.com and check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe, comment, let us know what you think.